Warning, the transformers in this video are powered by mains voltage. Mishandling of such a high voltage can lead to fatal injuries. As you might know, I attempted to create my own mains transformer with an old transformer core I had laying around, but failed terribly while trying to power it. And if you're completely confused right now, then make sure to watch my previous video about transformers, in which I explained the most important basics about them. Anyway, my first DIY transformer build failed, since I didn't have access to the magnetic and electric properties of the transformer core. Thankfully though, I found an online shop that sells standardized electrical steel sheets. So in this video, I will not only show you how to calculate and build a mains transformer with them, but I will also be using ferromagnetic filaments to create a 3D printer transformer core, which I will then test to determine whether it is a functioning alternative material. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, who currently run a special offer where you can place as many $2 PCB orders as you want, instead of just one. So upload your Gerber files today in order to get your custom PCBs within a week. A few days after placing my order, I received not only the electrical steel sheets, but also the fitting coil former. With fitting I mean that the coil former is made for the 84A transformer type. And of course my electrical steel sheets are also of this kind. Now the steel sheets have the form of an E and an I, which makes it later possible to easily stack them alternating inside the coil former in order to create the transformer core. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Firstly, I had to search for the properties of the steel sheets and found this amazing German site where we can not only find all the dimensions of the steel sheets, but also all the electrical, mechanical and magnetic values we could ask for. And as a bonus, even a table which converts the diameter of an ML copper wire into a cross-section value. So after copying the most important values of my transformer core, it was time to boil down all the formulas from the previous transformer video to those few, which is all we need for the basic calculations. The first one is the most important one, and the so-called transformer equation, which states that the induced voltage equals the maximum magnetic flux density multiplied by the cross-section of the iron core multiplied by the frequency multiplied by the number of turns. With it, we can calculate the number of turns on the primary side by simply replacing the variables with the given values of my transformer core. But since the maximum flux density was missing, and I didn't want to guess, I rather used the given voltage per winding value of 180 millivolts. Since we got 230 volts on the primary side, and I want 12 volts on the secondary side, we simply have to divide the voltage by the voltage per winding value. And thus we get a primary winding of around 1278 turns and a secondary winding of around 67 turns. Next, we need the diameter or cross-section area of the copper wire on the primary and secondary sides. For that, we need the apparent power rating as well as the maximum current density which should not be exceeded to prevent overheating. First off, we can use the power rating along with the primary and secondary voltage to calculate a maximum primary current of 0.22 amps and a maximum secondary current of 4.17 amps. Then we divide those current values by the maximum current density in order to get the minimum cross-section area of the copper wire which converted by the handy table equals a diameter of 0.32 mm for the primary side and 1.4 mm for the secondary side. And just like that we successfully calculated a basic mains transformer. 
The only problem was that I did not have the required copper wire and thus I had to undersize a tiny bit for the primary sides and quite a lot for the secondary sides. Which means we cannot draw the maximum amount of power the transformer core could handle. But nevertheless, I started the transformer builds by inserting the primary wire into its chamber and winding it around the former in a clockwise manner. Now, for the first 100 windings or so, I truly paid attention that the windings are exactly next to one another and tied around the former. But as time went on, I got more and more careless with the windings, which luckily though did work out just fine in the end. As soon as I was done with the primary side, I repeated the same winding process for the secondary side inside the other chamber, which obviously was a lot faster to do with the reduced number of turns. Once that was done, I inserted the E and I electrical steel sheets alternating inside the core former until there was no more space. While doing so, I started worrying that the sheets had no electrical isolation to one another, while other steel sheets clearly had such an isolation to presumably minimize eddy currents. So as a side experiment, I used white varnish which I sprayed onto dozens of steel sheets in order to create a second electrical isolated transformer core. After testing its performance, it was interesting to find out that the efficiency between isolated and not isolated is basically the same, but the reactive power of the isolated transformer was way higher. So apparently the simple physical separation of the sheets to one another and their oxide film is enough to minimize eddy currents. But anyway, to complete my transformer, I used M4 screws and nuts to hold the core together. After then measuring the resistance and inductance of the primary side, which were 51 ohm and 3.4 Henry, which is close enough to the commercial transformer from the previous video, I soldered mains wires to the primary coil and connected it to the mains voltage. And as you can see, nothing blew up and I was able to measure an output voltage of 13.3 volts at the secondary side. Awesome! As a first test, I used this 12 volts 21 watt light bulb, which lit up without any problems. But to be more scientific, I used a 20 ohm, 10 ohm and 5 ohm resistor, an energy meter and a multimeter to draw up to 26 watts on the secondary side and reach an efficiency of around 75%. I would say that is not half bad for such a non-ideal DIY attempt, but let's assume you do not have the commercial steel sheets. That is why I used the given dimensions of them in order to create a 1mm high E and I model in 123D design. After then slicing them with an infill of 100%, I used my ferromagnetic filaments to create dozens of transformer core slices, which obviously can stick to magnets, just like the real transformer core. So I assembled a core out of them the same way as I did it with the real steel sheets and thus was ultimately rewarded with a 3D printed transformer. Now hooking it up directly to mains voltage might not be a good idea, because with a primary inductance of merely 76 millihenry, we would draw a destructive high current. Instead, I hooked it up to my auto transformer, which at a mere voltage of 12 volts already delivered a current very close to the max current of the primary side. The reason is that our transformer equation changed, since we now got a way lower magnetic flux density and thus we would require way more windings on the primary side. To find out how much exactly, I used my function generator set to a 50Hz sine voltage to let 0.8mA flow through my original transformer, which therefore created a 40mV voltage on the secondary side. I also pushed 0.8mA through the 3D printed transformer, 
but I had to increase the frequency of the sine wave up to 4.5 kHz in order to get the same 40 mV voltage on the secondary side. Now this is of course only an estimation, but with a 90 times higher frequency, it means we got a 90 times lower maximum flux density and thus we would require 90 times more turns, which you can certainly not fit inside the transformer core, which means a 3D printed mains transformer with ferromagnetic filament is not possible. And by the way, if we create the transformer core with plain old PLA filament, the frequency would increase to 6.7 kHz, which proves that the ferromagnetic filament does work, just not well enough. If you want to learn more about this filament, then you can also check out my attempt at 3D printing a motor with it. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!